Hi everyone, I'm Nadia, and in today's video, my mom and I are making a custom-ordered large resin geode clock. This MDF base is 80 centimeters wide, which is about 31 inches. It's quite a thin MDF board, so I did do a layer of resin on the back and the front to prevent any possible warping. I outlined with a marker approximately where I wanted my geode section to be. Then I used a bunch of cups to prop it up and used a level to make sure that the surface is leveled. And this is a very important step that you'll want to keep in mind when working with resin. In this video, we'll be using Resin Pro's Art Pro Deluxe Resin, which is a high viscosity resin, and that makes it perfect to create geode art. I'll have a discount code linked in my description, so be sure to check that out. I mix in the part A and B resin together and mix well for several minutes. Then I start to separate it into smaller cups to add in my pigments. The first pigment I'm using is just resin's pigment paste in the shade parchment. And I'll also have a discount code to Just Resin in my description if you want to try out their pigments. Their pigment pastes are our favorite to use. Followed by Just Resin's Titanium White. Next is Just Resin's Emerald Green. My second shade of green is Just Resin's Forest Green. And we're going to be adding in a gold, and this is just resin's rich gold. And just a smidge of black as well. I make sure that all of the pigments are mixed in well into each cup of resin. I'm mixing my parchment and my white pigmented resin into one cup, and slightly mixing it and then pouring onto my MDF board. I did realize that it took quite a long time to mix in each pigment, and another issue is that I'm working in an attic during the summer, and in Croatia, which has been getting some pretty decent heat waves, so this attic is heating up really fast. And this causes my resin to heat up even faster, so I really needed to be quicker with it. I use a heat gun to help spread out the resin. Because this is such a large surface to work on, it is taking me a decent amount of time and it's also my first large project like this so I am being extra careful. So for my second layer, I bring in my mom in to help so that I can mix in the pigments faster and work with the resin faster since we are working in a fairly hot area. After I have my center done, I start to pour my black and green pigmented resins. I mixed in white into one of the greens and it came out a lot brighter than I anticipated. So I am going to use this layer more as another base layer and an outline for the colors. And we'll be working over mainly this green part the next day with my mom so we can work with the resin faster. Again, I'm using a heat gun to help spread out the resin. And I poured on some gold into my green geode area. Then I poured on some gold into that beige area and I quickly realized that I did not like how that looked. So I will also be going over that gold part in tomorrow's layer. I come back the next day and mix in my Art Pro Deluxe resin once more. And as I mentioned, this time my mom is here to help me work with the resin a bit faster. Now if this was a smaller piece or if I was working in a cooler area, it would be a lot more plausible to do on your own. We mixed in the same pigments that I did yesterday. And yesterday I did somewhat of a dirty pour on the beige area and I do like how that turned out, minus those gold streaks which I will be removing. So we decided to do more of a dirty pour onto that green geode area. I mixed in a bit of the black pigmented resin with the green pigmented resin and slightly stirred it and then started to pour. 
and we both play around adding different color combinations onto that geode area. And my mom has the great idea of adding in just resins pigment paste in the shade Sage, which is a lighter color for contrast. I leave the greens be for a little bit and decide to cover those gold streaks that I didn't like on the beige area. So now I'm focusing a bit more onto the beige area and my mom has started to pour in a mixture of the green resins along with that sage pigmented resin that she recently added in and it makes for a beautiful contrast. And from here we just continue pouring until we run out of time. It's already looking a lot better and we leave it to harden and come back the next day. When we come back the next day, we mix in our resin once more and this is again the Art Pro Deluxe and we're going to be focusing on mainly filling in those blank areas as yesterday as I was working on the beige part of the clock, those areas remained to be bulging out so we're going to be evening everything out leaving it with a flat surface. We use a silicon makeup brush and a heat gun to make sure that we have a perfect finish. Then I started to apply on some glass on the outer area of the geode. To make the application easy, I'm pouring the glass pieces from the bottle into the cap and using the cap to add on the glass pieces to the clock. Now that that layer is done, I'm using my Cut machine to cut out the numbers. I open the app on my phone, type out the numbers, and I'm using Roman numerals for 12, 3, 6, and 9, and for the remainders, I'll be using dashes. Through the app, you can choose the font and the size, so I adjust those accordingly. And I'm using gold adhesive foil, which leaves a beautiful, shiny finish. I'll also have this Cut machine linked on Amazon. I purchased one and it really comes in handy, not only for personalizing your resin pieces, but you can also use it like I am here to add on numbers to a clock and many other things. I peel away the excess gold foil. Once I'm left with just my numbers and gold foil, I use a strong grip transfer tape, and this is what we'll be using to place them onto the clock. Now this part was a huge learning experience for us. This is our first time working on a clock this large, and next time we'll definitely be getting a clock number template to make this part super easy. And this will really simplify this process because this took us a lot of time to measure out exactly where each number needs to go. So I am going to skip through this part a bit because we do not recommend doing it this way. Definitely get yourself a template. But once we had all of our placements marked, we could remove the paper from the bottom side and stick them into place. Of course, we also marked where the dashes needed to go and stuck those into place as well. Yeah. 
Now that that part is finally done, we're mixing in our resin once more to add the top coat and seal everything into place. And for this, and because it's a large surface, we found it a lot easier to spread the resin using our hands. We're also being careful to make sure that the edges of the clock are covered as well. And we use a torch gun to pop any air bubbles. The bottom of the clock was protected by liquid latex, which catches any resin drops that flow over. And in this case, we had a lot of resin drops. So once we're done with our pouring, I was able to remove those drops by removing the liquid latex. We added on the mechanism and the hands. And here's the final product. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Follow me on my Instagram, Summer Girl Designs, and my mom's Instagram, Wild Heart Resin Art.